Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, beloved. Oh, I still have this piece of glue. I have glitter on my eye. Did I get it? No. No. Uh. All right. Nope. Did I get it? I think I got it. No. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Okay, and welcome to the Glitter In My Face check-in. I'm Pastor B.A. Jackson, if you're watching this recording, this live, oh my God, I still sure don't have it. Y'all, I promise we're not gonna start until I get this glitter off my face. There's glitter everywhere in my house from my birthday celebration yesterday. And it, if you know anything about glitter, <laughs> it finds its way everywhere in your life once it's there. And I just got it. All right. So if you're watching this live, I've hopefully entertained you by trying to get glitter off my face. And um, you can also fast forward to about 15 minutes later as we get into the word and the song for today. Um, going to let give you all time to come in. And let me say welcome to community check-in. So let me give you all time just to come in, give you a little bit of time to come in. Uh, as we're coming in, I'm going to be also preparing our question for the day question but here's the first question i have for you all do i look different do i look older do i look wiser because last time you saw me uh i was 44 and now i am 45 years old i'm grateful uh let me just say also live to each and every one of you if anybody for all of you who send a text or a gift or a post or a call. Um, I am so, so, so grateful for you all making my 45th birthday memorable. Uh, I had a real, I had a good time yesterday. Had an emotional day. I was very emotional yesterday. Ups, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Um, but all in all, I really, really had a great time. And for any of you who contributed to that, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. We're, um, we're, we're, we're checking in today. And all that means is um, we're taking time to know how you are doing. We're taking time to give prayer requests. We're taking time to give praise reports. We're also going to be taking time to, um, to give a word today and to pray together. And so I'm glad whatever you're doing, uh, one of the reasons I love these community check-ins, it just gives us a moment during kind of the lunch hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays to check in on and with our spirit, to boost our spirit. Uh, if you've not done so already, please let me encourage you to um, to check your life, to check your life. Today, we're going into Easter week. And I have a question for all of you. <laughs> I have a question for each and every one of you today because it is Easter week, it's Holy Week. Um, And I have a question for you good Christians who grew up in the church and grew up celebrating Easter. Um, let's do this. Let's see who all is saying good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, Felicia Holmes. How does 45 feel? I tell you what, I don't feel any different, but I will say mentally, um, 45 is the first time I've had a birthday where at least theoretically I feel like, okay, I'm getting older. Like I'm really... For, like 45 makes me, I've, and I told you all last time, I've been reflective about this 45 years. 
as I realize that I may, I don't know how much time God is going to allow me to be on earth, but the reality that I may have seen more years than I will see is starting to set in on me. Uh, and I think about that. Uh, so 45 feels great. Uh, only I'm not as in shape as I want to be because I've been injured and I've not been able to work out. Uh, so I'm ready to get back to working out again. But I feel great healthy-wise. I don't feel any older, but I, I just, it, well, no, I guess I do feel mentally older. Uh, and not that I'm smart or anything like that, but just mentally 45 makes me feel like I'm re getting it up there in age. Uh, so thank you for asking. Good afternoon, Miss Irene Smith. It's always good to see you. Miss Margaret Whitaker, I'm all. From um, Dallas, Texas. Um, so thank you so much for taking time to join us. Good afternoon, Miss Meryl Kay. And good afternoon, Yolanda Ellis Taylor. Um, good afternoon, Michelle Gordon. It's good to see you today. And good afternoon, Troy Valdez. Good to see you today. Um, hey, Isis. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you today. And Miss Sandra Manassa, it's always great to see you. <clears throat> good afternoon, Miss Linda. Uh, <laughs> that's correct. If if you joined earlier, you all, uh, I was having a, I had glitter on my face and I could not get it off. And I told y'all we were not doing this community check-in with me having glitter on my face. Um, Margaret Whitaker says, you look like my mom, you look like your mom and dad. I do. I do. I was uh, on a zoom with my family yesterday. And whenever I shave, because my dad is shaved now and I shave, I realized how much I look like my dad. Um, but the first thing couple my aunt said is, Lord, I thought that was Barry. Barry is my dad, you all. Um, so thank you so much. Good afternoon. Um, Gloria Martin It's good to see you and good afternoon, Karen Valdez. Um, all right, we have a couple of prayer requests, so let me do this. Let me start my question of the day, and you all can then begin your prayer request. My question of the day, since we're in Holy Week, we're going up to Easter. Do you remember any former Easter speech? If you grew up in the church, at some point, you had to have done an Easter speech. So my question to you is, because I remember, uh, now it's not long, but I remember having to do an Easter speech in Timpson, Texas. And I want to say the church was Smyrna Baptist Church. Interestingly enough, I live in Smyrna, Georgia right now. I remember an Easter speech. I'm going to give it to you all. Uh, it's not long, but I'm going to tell you one of the Easter speeches I remember from when I was a kid. Because my grandmother, my late grandmother, Danny Mae Arnold, made me go over it over and over and over again. Y'all, my grandma wasn't playing. Like, these kids, the day be reading Easter speeches. Oh, Daddy May Arnold wasn't having none of that. Not her and Vantress Jackson. You had to remember an Easter speech. I remember in first, second grade, I was, uh, now, y'all, I went to a school. It was a very small, black-owned private school, so I don't want y'all to think I was this smart, but I was the valedictorian of my class. Uh, there may have been 20 kids in that class, right? So I don't, I don't want you all to think that I was just killing it out there. But I was the valedictorian, and at our graduation, we had to, re we had to do a speech. Y'all, do y'all realize at, in the second grade, I had to do a whole type. It, it was typed for me. They made the speech. But it was a typed, full page type, and it went to the second page speech. And in second grade, I had to remember every word. That's why when I see these little kids coming up with these little pieces of paper, reading two lines at Easter, y'all, we got to do better as parents. Y'all know those kids can remember those little two lines. All right. I'm off my soapbox. I digress. Did do you remember any former Easter speech? Y'all let me know. And if you do, if you don't, um, that's fine. I gotta do a couple of prayer requests while you all are telling me about your Easter speeches. If you don't remember Easter speech, give me your favorite Easter play. What was it about? When was it? What church? Give me some of the details uh, of your favorite Easter play. <clears throat> All right. And my contacts are messing up. This is not going to be a, I feel like. 
I'm taking prayer requests. If you have a prayer request, I want you to do two things. Three things. A, please share your live. B, if you have prayer requests, please give them. C, if you don't, tell me your fa- if you remember any of your former Easter speeches or tell me about your favorite Easter. And um, Miss Irene Smith, I feel like you've given that prayer request before. Yes. Yes, I have you right here. Uh, I have your prayer request. Um, you all forgive me. I am struggling with my contacts today. Thank you, Ms. Meryl Kay. I'm getting your prayer request and you all are telling me about your favorite. Do you remember Easter speech? Good afternoon, Ms. Lisa Gonzalez, and good afternoon, Ms. Patricia, um, Ms. Patricia Lewis. Uh, let me know, do you remember any former Easter speech or any part of your Easter speeches? Any part of your Easter speech? And Ms. Andrea Hubbard, thank you so much for joining today. I am giving, I'm, I'm writing down your prayer request. Thank you so much, Ms. Yolanda. I am writing down your prayer request as well. All right, I see some of y'all answering about your Easter speeches. I can't wait to get to this. All right. Um, Miss um, Patricia Lewis, I'm writing down your prayer request. You have a child named Talia. Lord, I have a good story about a Talia back in my life a long time ago. I had a, this when I was in high school. You know, back in high school, you just get in these relationships, and I don't even know why we get in them because we couldn't even never see each other. But I had a girlfriend who was Muslim named Talia. We may have gone together two weeks, but it was in high school. She went to some school in Arlington. Oh, what was his name? Me and my crew. It was one of those times. You know how you have a crew of friends, they meet a crew of friends, and everybody start going together? It was one of those. I promise, if Talia walked in my house right now, I wouldn't even know who she was. Um... Okay, we got a lot of prayer requests today. So let me, y'all have to give me some time. I love when we have prayer requests. Thank you all so much. We're gonna get into the word in just a minute. But I hope you answered this question. Do you remember any of your former Easter speeches? I remember mine. You got to stay on because you ought to hear my Easter speech, you all, from Smyrna Baptist Church in Timpson, Texas. Amen. Timpson was a t- town in East Texas. It was so small. I think even today, Timpson only has one school. Like one big campus, elementary, all the way to high school. Timpson, Texas. That's where my mom is from. Um, I am taking prayer requests. Valeria, I have your prayer requests. Okay, Andrea, I feel like, okay, yeah, Nathaniel Clark. Don't I have him? Okay, so I'm going to put this other prayer request with your other ones. Um, Hermona. We're taking prayer requests. Please come into the comments and let me know how you're doing. 
Okay, I have Ramona Hubbard. All right, let's go so we can get into this word and we can get into prayer. Also, by the way, my word is coming from my book, Live Greater, Think Deeper, Love Better, Spiritual Reflections uh, for the Heart, Mind, and Soul. Um, let me stop and say hello, Morgan. Morgan Blackman, I'm so glad to see you. I miss you so much on Sundays. Morgan, you all, is one of our young greeters. Uh, and she always blesses my heart to see her. So I'm glad, Morgan, you got a chance to come in today. Hello, Kathy Adams. Glad you got a chance to come in today. Lisa, I think I put your good morning, but just in case I didn't, let me put good morning right now. We are talking about good afternoon, Sonia. Glad you could join. Hey, as you all are coming in, please at least say hello, even if you're not staying, right? We're not the church police. I know some of you have things to do, uh, but I would love uh, to know. That's right. Listen to this, right? I I, I know Miss Brenda didn't play about no uh, read no paper easy speech. I'm talking about listen. Vanders and Danny May Arnold wasn't playing with y'all with these Easter speeches. Um, okay, so let's see who doesn't remember. I got Heather. Heather says she don't remember no Easter speech. Heather, you don't remember no Easter speech at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. And now you're just not saying good afternoon. Good afternoon, Heather. It's good to see you. Um, I'm sure Linda King is very upset that you don't remember not one Easter speech. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Does anybody remember an Easter speech? Let me look through here. Okay. There we go. Regina, come on up in here. She says, I remember some of it. Jesus is risen. He is not here. The stone has been rolled away. Something dot, dot, dot. I can't remember on this glorious Easter day. Come on, Regina. I wish I could bring you in. Um, Oh, Regina, let me see. Let me see if I can bring you in here so you can say your little Easter speech. Let me see. Uh, I ought to be able to copy the clipboard. Regina, look, if you have your phone and you want to come say your Easter speech, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, I got to go to Messenger. Come on, Messenger. All right, Regina, <laughs> you know I'm messy. I just sent you a link. If you want to come on and give your little Easter speech, come on. All right, let's see. Does anybody else remember the Easter speech? Kathy Adams says she can't remember any. Patricia Lewis uh, says she can remember her Easter speech. Patricia, you know what I'm about to tell you? I don't know if we're friends, so if we're not friends, I may not be able to. Oh, here you go, right here. Patricia Lewis, if you want to give your Easter speech, I just sent you a link. I'm going to get somebody to come up here and do their Easter speech now. It's Easter. Here we go. Um, I don't remember anything religious about Easter. Forgive me. I do remember freezing cold in Boston, <laughs> patent leather shoes, the elastic string on my hat, and lots of candy. That's hilarious. Heather King says she had to remember all of her Easter speeches. Miss Kathy, thank you so much for your prayer request. I am putting your prayer request in right, right now. Right now, I'm putting your prayer request in. Um, wait a minute. I just lost it. Oh, here we go. All right. We're talking Easter today. I've sent links to people. If you want to do your Easter speech. Brandon Watson and... Andrew Blake Hubbard says, Easter in our house involved music, lots of songs played. Oh, that's fine, Patricia. Yeah, if you're at work, that's totally fine. <laughs> no problem. I I'm just having fun. 
Um, lots of songs played, many instruments by the many. Cause okay, I like that. Just a family of musicians. Uh, never did an Easter speech, Jorge. You've never done an Easter speech, Jorge. We're gonna have to give you an Easter speech. One of these Easter at Fellowship of Love Church. We're gonna have to put your grown self right on that stage, just so you can say uh, your Easter speech. Sarah says confession is good for the soul. I didn't know what an Easter speech was. Oh my God. Sarah said she didn't even know what an East speech was until six years ago, so I never had to do one because she was Presbyterian. Now, this is something, I'm learning something. I'm today years old when I'm just realizing is Easter speech, are Easter speeches a black thing? Because I know it's some black Presbyterians that had to do some Easter speeches. Or I know, okay, now I know Baptist and Methodist churches, so I know it's not just denominational. This is phenomenal. Yeah, because let me tell you, every church I've been to, you had Easter speeches. Um, from Hewlett Avenue Baptist Church to Sweet Home Baptist Church to Munga Avenue Baptist Church to Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church to Olivet Baptist Church of Christ. And now, <laughs> or he says, no, no speech. I can't arrive. No. Okay, that's fine. That's good enough. That is good enough. Um I'm learning Easter speeches are a black thing. My God. And my mom is here. Mom, this is going to be good because when I do my Easter speech, I want to know, do you remember it? I There's one Easter speech I particularly remember. And I remember it because we we must spend Easter in Timpson, Texas. Uh, why am I putting your prayer request up? Let me do this. Let me go back to um, the question. And then I'm doing my Easter speech. We got to go, y'all. We got to... Um, I'm not going to be here all day. I got I got something to do between when we end at 1 o'clock. And that's very important. Miss Cooper's church does it. Lisa, Miss Lisa, what kind of church is it? Is it a, um, tell us what kind of church it is. I think I just got a prayer request. Yes, my mom. Ursie Jean D. All right. AME Church had children do it together. So I'm wondering, I'm actually wondering, are Easter speeches a black thing? That's very interesting uh, and very intriguing. All right. Black, not Baptist. Okay. So Easter speeches had no idea. I got to call some of my white friends now and talk about Easter. Karen says, I didn't grow up in church, didn't raise my boys in church, but I dressed them and made nice Easter baskets with an Easter egg hunt, and we always had a big Easter dinner. I feel like a heathen. This is interesting. I'll tell you something very funny about that. To this day, I still get Bryce Easter basket. To this day. So Bryce is 14 years old, and guess what he's getting this Easter? An Easter basket. Yes, he is. Um... Good afternoon, Barbara Jones. It's good to have you and good to see you today. All right. Real quick, and I want to get into this word. Here's my Easter speech um, from Smyrna Baptist Church. Mama, what is Smyrna Baptist Church in Timson? Go into the comments, Mama, and let me know. But Danny May Arnold, me and Danny May Arnold went over and over and over this Easter speech. I had to be, y'all, six years old or under. I'm 45, and I still remember this speech. And here it is. This chance, I would not miss this chance to say it's Easter Day. <laughs> that was it. That was my famous Easter speech from Smyrna Baptist Church, Timson, Texas, in case you missed it. Now, you all have to know my grandmother, because I promise I didn't even say it that well in that much energy. But my grandmother, Danny Mae Arnold, whenever she was excited or energetic, she would hold words. So if she got mad at you, my mama just started laughing, y'all. Mama, do you remember that Easter speech? <laughs> do you remember that in Smyrna Baptist Church? My grandmother, when she would have long, when she would get any type of excitement, she would hold words. So let's say this. Let's say uh, one time, oh, I'm telling everything. I snuck out of my grandmother's house for the night and got caught. Um, and I remember 
you know, we had put some stuff up in the bed to act like we were asleep. Me and my, my boy, we had put some stuff in the bed and put the covers up. And so that they checked on us, they would think we were asleep. But we snuck out the window and we went out, came back. My grandma was sitting in the bedroom waiting for us to come into the window. <laughs> Here's what's funny. Like real teenagers, we had to stick with the lie. We had to stick with the lie. So I told my grandmother, oh, no, we weren't sneaking out. We had to go home for some reason, and we don't want to wake y'all up. So we went through the window to not to wake you up. It, it's terrible. Anyway, so my grandmother, as we're having this conversation, she's upset with me, of course, for lying ever sneaking out. My grandma says this, and I never get it. And this is my grandma when she's upset. She was like, Bashan, you can't get nothing over me. I'm an old woman. Whenever my grandmother got excited, she would hold words. So this is how she told me to do my Easter speech. She said, this is how I want you to say it. This chance, I would not miss this chance to say it's Easter Day. Danny May Arnold, y'all, the legacy of Danny May Arnold. That was my Easter speech. I see all of y'all laughing at me in my Easter speech. But that showed what it was. Smyrna Baptist Church, Timson, Texas. I introduced Easter. I don't know why I'm letting, showing all y'all love. My mama said, that's, that is it. You remember it, mama? That's too funny. That was my Easter speech. I, I don't know how old I was. Mama, do you have any idea how old I was at that Easter speech? Give me a guess. Go into the comments. Let me know. But mama telling me to stop. Whenever she tells me to stop, she wants me to stop confessing my sins, y'all. Um, mama, do you remember how old I was? All right. Um, as you all, as if my mama can remember how old I was, um, uh, I want to go ahead and go into the word today. <clears throat> Okay, I know what I want to do today. Um, I may have done this one before, but I'm old. See, I got another birthday, so I can use the old excuse. What I should have asked you all for today was what was your favorite TV show? <laughs> Happy Easter Day never sounded so funny. That's hilarious. That's right. That was my um that was my Easter speech. Here's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about lessons from I Love Lucy. And my lesson comes from the fourth chapter of my book. And so if you don't have my book. Let me give this to you. Kathy Adams, I promise you I owe you two books and I promise I'm going to get them to you. I promise you, promise you, promise you I'm not forgotten. Um, I told you we are having difficult with the difficulty with um, the printing. Um, but I promise you I have not forgotten that I owe you a book. Um, but live, th live greater, think deeper, love better. In the fourth chapter, there's a chapter called Lessons from I Love Lucy. <clears throat> and that's what I want to read to you today as we and use this for a word. Here we go. Ages ago, there was a black and white sitcom that literally held the eyes and ears of America. Some of you are old enough to remember, I realize that I'm dating myself to some and making myself irrelevant to others. But as a child, I became fascinated with watching this show called I Love Lucy. I became fascinated with watching I Love Lucy reruns. If you've ever watched the I Lo Love Lucy episode, would you let me know in the comments if you know anything about I Love Lucy? On one particular episode, Lucy's husband, Ricky, walks in the house from work and finds Lucy crawling across the floor. Ricky walks in. <clears throat> Lucy is crawling across the floor meticulously looking for something. 
Ricky had a Latin voice. Um, he says, what are you doing? Asked Ricky. Lucy responds, I am looking for my earrings. Ricky inquisitively states, you lost your earrings in the living room? Lucy then shakes her head no and asserts, no, I lost them in the bedroom, but the light in here is much better. Now, this is funny, but believe it or not, it humorously describes so many of our lives. Lucy has decided to make the search easy. While at the same time, making the find impossible. Stop, rewind, play. Lucy has decided to make the search easy while at the same time making the find impossible. Go back to the conversation. Ricky comes in, sees Lucy looking, looking for earrings. And he asks, you lost your earrings in the living room? Lucy says, no, I didn't lose my earrings in the living room. I lost them in the bedroom. But the light in here is much better. So she wants the search to be easy with more light. But she lost the earrings in the bedroom. And so the search has become more easy. But the find has become impossible. Stay with me. In other words, her desire for an easy process has eliminated the possibility of a wanted goal. Stop, rewind, play. Her desire for an easy process has eliminated the possibility of achieving the goal. Now, clearly none of us would search for earrings lost in a bedroom, in a living room. None of us will go to the living room to look for earrings that we lost in the bedroom. I don't think, I hope not. However, listen to this. There are many of us who will sacrifice effective results for an easier, more comfortable, process. Think about it. How many times have you decided to go with the familiar? Have you decided to go with the easier? Have you decided to go with the more known and the more comfortable? But you knew that taking that route would never take you where you wanted to go. It would never place you where you really wanted to be or would never give you what you wanted to have. So many of us choose relationships that we know will not really ever give us happiness. So many of us choose jobs that will not give us purpose. So many of us choose tasks that will not give us fulfillment, all because we want to make it easy on ourselves. Lucy could have made the choice to take a long time to be victorious in a hard search rather than take forever to be defeated in an easy search. Stop, rewind, play. Think about this. I hope somebody's meditating and I hope you are hearing and absorbing this lesson is right here in this I Love Lucy episode. Lucy could have made the choice to take a long time, a longer time than she wanted, but be victorious in be victorious in a difficult search rather than take forever and be defeated in an easy search. How many of us have defeated ourselves because we have chosen the easier path? I'm trying to help someone today. How many of us 
we'll never find what we are looking for because we don't want the frustration of long hours, days, weeks, or months of tireless searching. Can I tell you how many female friends and male friends I know who have settled for less than spectacular relationships because they don't want to go through the difficult journey of dating? I'm just trying to help somebody today. How many times have we chosen brighter lights only to darken our chances and weaken our future? Beloved on today, I want to challenge you to go back to the room where you can find what you are looking for. Go back to the search that may be harder but ultimately more rewarding. Leave the path that is easier, but offers no victory. Leave the path that is rosier, but offers no triumph. If the scripture is true, that you reap what you sow, then don't be afraid to till hard ground to get a great harvest. That's all I want to tell you today. Lucy was searching for earrings that she had lost in the bedroom. I'm helping somebody. In fact, let me pause and somebody right now needs to share your life. Tag someone because there's someone here who has a Lucy-like problem. Lucy lost earrings in the bedroom, but because the light was bad, she didn't want to struggle and look for earrings in bad light. And though it's humorous, so she went to the living room where she knew there were no earrings, but the lights were brighter. It was easier to search in the living room. She could see more in the living room. She wouldn't bump into stuff in the living room. In the bedroom, she might've had to feel her way out. In the bedroom, she may have had to lift some stuff. In the bedroom, she might've had to squint more. In the bedroom, it would've taken longer. But guess what? There was victory in the bedroom. There was triumph in the bedroom. There was accomplishment in the bedroom. And there's someone who needs to understand that sometimes the victory is in the harder path. The triumph is in the more difficult journey. The accomplishment is in the darker place. And there's someone who needs to come out of easy street and get on the hard road because the climb of your mountain is there. I wish I had time to tell you the more difficult the climb, the more rewarding the view. But that's a whole nother story. And that's a whole nother lesson. Share your life. There's someone who needs to hear that. Maybe you need to hear it over and over again. But that's the lesson that I learned from I Love Lucy. Bow your head. Let's close our eyes. Let's go to God in prayer. God, today I come to you with one simple request. I don't want to hold you long and I don't want to do a long and laborious prayer. But today I want to ask for the strength, the energy, the fortitude, and the will for every man and woman who can hear my voice to take, to have the courage to take the harder path, especially if that's where the victory is. If what they're looking for is in a dark room, God, give someone the courage to go into the darkness. God, there's someone here who needs to have the will, who needs to have the decision-making, who needs to have the courage, who needs to have the strength, who needs to have the fortitude, who needs to have the diligence, who needs to have the dedication to go where it's harder, to go where the mountains are high, to go where the waters are deep, to go where the road is rough. But God is on that road that there is victory and accomplishment. And so I'm praying today, God, that you give us the strength to not always take the easy road, but to take whatever road we need to do to get victory. We come to you, God, with other people on our hearts and minds praying God. You know our prayer list. You know the situation and you know the circumstance. But today we want to call people by name. <clears throat> James Walker, Samuel Perry, Shirley Warren, Charles Haynes, Cash Barnard, Gloria Martin, Irene Jenkins, Edward Jenkins, Harold Jackson, Jean Klingscale, Theodore Diggs, Marsha and Michael Gillian, Lisa Allen and Shana Patterson, Cora Smith, Elisa Harrison Reddick, Candace Anderson, Sharon Morrell, Nathaniel Clark, Ms. Vern, Hermona Hubbard, Reverend James Carter, Andre and Andre Ellis, 
traveling grades for Julia Anderson, Valeria Boykin, Ray John Hayes, Constance Johnson, Rusheen Reed, Dana Tanner, Lawrence Jones, Carlotta Best, Colton Harden, Margaret Darby, the homeless community, Talia, Brittany, Brian, and Rafiq, Heather King, Linda King, family and friends of Heather and Linda King, give them love, clarity, health, and happiness, and productivity. Brandon Watson and Miss Betty Starr, Ursi Jean Dixon, and Raven and Wrangle family. God, for every name we've called, we need you to show up right here and right now. We need you to show up for Brian Goodman, Reverend James Carter. We need you to show up right now, God. And so, God, I'm praying that you would hear our prayer. God, I'm praying that you would meet us wherever we are. God, I'm praying that you would dry an eye, lift a heart, regulate a mind, clear a path, and give victory, God to each and every person on this line. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in this moment. Thank you for being in this place. In Jesus' name, the matchless name of Jesus, the marvelous, miraculous, and mysterious name of Jesus, the loving, liberating, and life-giving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> amen, 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 beloved. I want to thank you for joining us today for our community check-in. Uh, I praise God for each and every one of you. I praise God. I'm touching and agreeing with your amen. Uh, I'm praying, I praise God that you chose to be here today. I praise God that you choose to check in with us. I'm praying for your spirit today, that it be boosted. I'm praying for your life today, that it be bettered. And I'm praying for your health, that we be more attentive to it. God, give us the strength to go the harder route, sometimes the darker play, the place, so that we can find victory. May God bless you today. You have a blessed day too, Miss Patricia Lewis. And may God keep you. And please remember to live in love. Y'all have a great day.